let us start another concept which is known as bow tie actually bow tie is not a new thing it is basically combination of fall tree and event tree but it gives the holistic picture from the basic event uh, failure to the accident scenarios at the end state so that's why the in past couple of years uh, this has been um, very popular and I want to explain this bow tie concept uh, primarily with uh, examples because the basic principles underlying the bow tie is already discussed that fall tree and event tree. Nevertheless, let us know that this concept and uh, utility of bow tie. So, introduction terminology is bow tie tool and management and several examples. So, that is what we will be discussing and uh, although I have written here that uh, the book written by Komamutu and Henle that Henle Komamutu and Henle. So, but there is another book which we have taken into consideration that is by Madaris. So, that is also reliability and risk assessment. So, later on I will show you the uh, reference for moderates also. So, we primarily rely on these two uh, books and uh, the concept of bow tie and this is what is the discussion for the next 30 minutes of time and you will enjoy it because most of the things already you know. So, to some extent it will be revisit to fall tree and event tree and in another way it is basically a, the holistic uh, view of uh, for prevention through design also. So, if we go back to the um, history then it was developed to address the safety case in the oil and gas industry that is a Piper Alpha incident and after Piper Alpha incident so far what I know that this bow tie concept become popular. Uh, and in, in fact, the what I understand from the literature that uh, in first couple of years it is increasingly popular. So, what it does basically as I told you that it basically links the basic event failure to, uh, to the uh, top event in the uh, fall tree and then linking to event tree and finally, a huge path the from basic event to the accident scenarios. So, if the accident scenarios is the consequences and the basic event side that the component level hazards. So, then what we basically say that linking from the hazards and to consequences that been the causes of hazard occurrences and ultimately then then up to consequences. So, it is relationship the total relationship. And at the and another very important one is that it will talk about the preventive and mitigative measures required uh, for uh, along different accident paths. So, it will also give you the total accident path, but it is very exhaustive one. So, it is not possible to develop maybe the for the entire system. So, maybe for the safety critical system or safety critical uh, I, uh, subsystem you can go for uh, this. Further understanding can be improved by examining the means by which the preventive and mitigative measures fails. So, what I mean to say you have preventive mitigative measures, but it can fail how it will fail. So, that means an identifying risk control system which helps to maintain the integrity of the system by integrity we means mechanical integrity, operational integrity. Okay. So, <coughs> so, this is what is basically uh, the use of uh, bow tie. So, terminologies are very much known to you hazard and you know top event, basic event, consequences, preventive measures, mitigative measures. So, so, what I mean by preventive measures that means actually uh, when we talk about an, any accident. 
so um, that top event then whatever you do to so that the top event will not occur so that is basically nothing but the cause will not occur so similarly mitigative measure is the what you will do that the impact of an accident will be minimized it is nothing but that you will you will basically basically minimize the impact or recovery from the consequences so in one way or other way this these are the explanations so many a times i have explained all those things so i don't think that you require further explanation here so as i told you that uh, particularly this bow tie tool so that means it is from the hazard then causes then preventive measures top event mitigative measure consequence so there is the the sequence and you see we are saying the top event with with reference to probability when we are talking about consequence we are bringing the event tree so that mean fault tree and event tree will be linked and there are simple design axiomatic design virtuality many things that can be added to their analytics so when all will ultimately leads to either identifying hazards or underlying the safety critical factors or under, underlying the factors that contributes towards the hazard occurrence initiating mechanism uh, all those things then what kind of preventive measures mitigative measures those things will be required and ultimately the risk control system and how risk control systems will uh, will be made operational will be monitor and control all those things can be put together under bow tie tool and management so that aspect bow tie tool and management will not be discussed in this particular lecture but later on uh, if if uh, we will try but i am not sure that we will go up to that what i tool management part and definitely you will be able to do it uh, the reason is because uh, you you have enough time uh, after going through this course you practice this so here uh, we are again relying back to the uh, system that is basically pressure tank system here intentionally i have created the top event as pump overrun because we think that the tank rupture is the basically the accident state so it is uh, it is better uh, you 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 work on pump overrun because if pump overrun can be minimized uh, or can can be eliminated that over pressure condition can be eliminated tank rupture will, will uh, at least because of uh, that deviation or over pressure it will not happen so this part you have seen in uh, in my last lecture also that why pump overrun takes place because uh, the current to motor too long because why current to motor too long because the contact the circuit is closed too long and then contact are closed too long switch is closed too long this way we have developed and then what i am saying that e pump overrun is my top event then what happened the over pressure condition will arise and in order to in order to arrest the over pressure or fight against the over pressure condition or bringing back the over pressure situation to the normalcy so there are different protection measures are there so like alarm is there alarm should work then operator should work so anyhow alarm is a signal only so we are i am not using alarm here that mean what i am straight away going that that definitely under pump overrun situation the operator should work you can add alarm no problem but for the time being i am saying that operator should shut down the system if operator fail to shut down operator shut down may be may succeed may not succeed if operator succeeds what will happen then pressure protection that is not not applicable here because not required so so then that mean the relief valve case it is not required maybe because it is pump overrun operator shut down so that may not be required so then what happened no rupture situation will be there this is my planned state what we other way are is in the accident scenarios accident scenarios but if operator shut down fails then what will happen over pressure that condition this will increase more gas will be fed then ultimately the relief valve should work and then if relief valve succeeds then again there is no rupture again although there will be minimum loss of um, that gas but if relief valve fails 
the rupture will take place. So then I can tell you that if I know the MCACR for the for the pump overrun the minimal cut state then every MCS leads to this and then the path is that pump overrun this takes place and this one is this one OS going to this. What we have done here? You have created a bow tie. Why? One hand this fall tree, fall tree, another hand event tree. This fall tree talks about why pump overrun, event tree talks about if pump overrun takes place, how your system behave against pump overrun to make uh, to restore the normalcy. If your that system protection measure fails, then finally the rupture situation, the accident situation will take place. So, it is a beautiful way of looking into the problem. You may say I start with this and then ultimately one big fall tree will be there. So, that we have seen earlier. Other way you can say no because tank rupture if it is the top event that means everything has happened and uh, your preventive and mitigative measures are not that much uh, differentiated. But here if I if I know that pump overrun to be arrested, so in order to arrest pump overrun what I will do that are mitigation uh, that are basically mitigating the effect of pump overrun. And then what is the accident path here? So, accident path will be uh, suppose let us this event 2 occurs this is rho, this is and then one more event should occur here, suppose event 4 occurs. So, 2 and 4 will be the one of the MCS. So, MCS suppose this is 2 M MCS 2, this is nothing but 2 and 4. So, then 2 and 4, so these two together along with this path will lead to no rupture. 2 and 4 happen here along with this path, so 2 and 4 along with this path it will be rupture. So, 2 4 occurs here, operator shutdown occurs, the operator shutdown fails means operator fail to shut down and protection measure relief valve also fail then rupture condition will take place. So, that means 2 4 OS PP that 2 4 combiningly this is PO pump overrun OS and PP they are all independent event. So, they are multiplied and this is what is the accident sequence. And if we know the probability of this PO, probability of OS and probability of PP, I can know the probability of this accident sequence. Okay. So, that means this is accident sequence 1, sequence AS2 and AS3, but fortunately these two sequences are same, no rupture condition. So, no rupture condition probability will be probability of this plus probability of this whereas rupture condition probability will be this. Okay. So, this is what is our bow tie. So, bow tie, what an this side event tree and this side if I just rotate this one with a with and gate what will happen you are getting two side here this and this then or gate here also or gate or gate then 1 2 3. So, 1 2 3 again 1 2 3 these are all so this. So, ultimately what happened? It looks like a bow tie, it is a tie, okay. this is the tie. So, if I say this is my top event, this bow tie, this top event then this side is basically why this event occur and this side what will happen if that event occur. If this is the, if I say that we want to prevent the pump over run, then these whatever we do here, what do you do? If you can, one cut state is 2 and 4, primary contact failure, primary switch failure, this should not simultaneously occur. So, you put a prevention so that this should not occur. Then this is prevention to this. Similarly, there will be several cut states. So, all cut states, if not, does not occur, then this will not occur. Now, question is that the preventive measures whatever you will put that also will fail. So, ultimately there is a possibility of probability of offending this. Then your protection system operator shutdown other things should occur. So, that pump overrun will not take place. Okay. So, this is nutshell 
what is mean by bow tie now i i'll i'll just uh, repeat the case the cut set case for this these are the cut set earlier we have discussed how to develop cut set so i'm not going into that detail of cut set so you say that there are six cut sets uh, to any any this occurs this will occur this occur this will occur so what will be your preventive measures here you do something so that these two simultaneously these two simultaneously these two simultaneously they should not occur okay okay now what happened you may be interested to know that okay i want to know the probability of the accident sequence then you have the bow tie so you first find out the probability of this then you know that what is the success of this and uh, 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 this one fails it should be it should be reverse success success should be 0.99 and failure should be 0.01 and in this case in this case 0.5 and 0.5 let uh means under over pressure condition but these are these are very hypothetical value given but it is better always this is very poor design it's it also may be 0.99 and the fails will be 0.01 then what will happen 0.00368 multiplied by this will give you the probability of this so you just change this one i am not sure this whether this value will okay but actually purpose was just to demonstrate but the demonstration should be also practically significant because operator shut down should succeed maximum of the time so other way you can say that means you i i want to give you uh, other way this can be interpreted like this if you give uh, here more probability that it will fail that means you have not understand the system or the system is actually this this is meaningless should not be there so similarly the protection measure this should work for the maximum number of situation so this is give you the clue so if you put more more probability of failures more probability of protection this second fails this is not a good one well, accordingly you change this one and 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 as i told you this is the initiating event from event tree point of view and these are the pivotal events okay and these are the basic events these are the secondary events secondary events means which are not known so far the causes are uh, under developed okay so now i will tell you <coughs> another one so as i told you that boat i uses fall tree and event tree here we will i'll show you that how fall tree is used inside the event tree because the the protection configuration also may fail and then how do you find out the failure probability of those for example let me explain here here what happened we are saying operator shutdown and we are writing that operator shutdown fails with 0.01 and succeeds 0.99 okay so now how do you get this probability so that means there may be or pressure protection it suppose fails 50% of the time it should not be but let it be like this then how do you know this is 5.5 so that means you can have a fault tree of this you can have a fault another fault tree of this provided these are these are their fault those fault tree will be relevant and significant fault tree otherwise if it is a trivial one don't do okay so that is what i want to discuss here <clears throat> here our uh, this particular thing we have taken from modaris 1993 that what every engineer should know about reliability and risk analysis new year so there he has given this particular system it is basically fire protection system that mean fire already taken place now what should you do so that you will see protect your system from fire okay so so see that there are there are different components like nozzle 1 nozzle 2 these are injection nozzle which basically inject the water to the fire 
so that will be activated to that pump must be there which will basically supply water to then pump 2 there are different valves more imp and importantly the water tank is there from where the pumps are basically sucking water and then providing to injection nozzle and injection nozzle will basically suppress the fire. So, it is a it is a one ki kind of standby system basically if this does not work this will work if both fails then ultimately the operator will call the fire department and ultimately there there are offset power source if power source will not work then diesel dg system is there and obviously there is detection alarm actuator which are, which basically helps in and doing the work now let us let us read the uh, operation details and so that so that what will happen you will understand how the system will work the study you see the, the system is designed to extinguish all possible fires in a plant with toxic chemicals. I am I have taken it from this particular refer book. So, it is in detail. The two physical independent war ex, uh, water extinguishing nozzle uh, that sorry two physical independent water extinguishing nozzles are designed such that each one is capable of controlling all types of fire in the plant means nozzle 1 is capable of extinguishing the fire nozzle 2 also extinguish able to extinguish. Extinguishing nozzle 1 is the primary method of injection. So, whenever in fire situation nozzle 1 will work primarily. Upon receiving a signal from the detector alarm actuated device pump 1 start automatically. So, the de detection device is there, it, it will detect that fire occurs, maybe a smoke is the starting point. So, then immediately what will happen, the nozzle 1, the pump 1 will activate and, and pumping start and nozzle uh, through nozzle 1, the extinguishing uh, will start. Okay. So, what way pump 1 start? Drawing water from the reservoir tank and injecting it into the fire into the fire area in the plant if this if this pump injection path acha okay now what will happen if this pump injection path is not actuated pump operator can start a second injection path manually this is the manual one if the second path is not available then the operator will call for help from the local fire department so there are three one is injection 1 it is it basically gets signal from the alarm detector start working if that, that, that does not work then injection system 2 is there which will be which will be operated manually by the operator suppose both the things fail then operator call the local fire department. However, due to delay in the arrival of the local fire department the magnitude of damage would be higher than it would be if the local fire extinguisher nozzles were available to extinguish the fire. That means, if nozzle 1, nozzle 2 or nozzle 2 they can extinguish the fire the damage will be less compared to calling the uh, fire department when these two system fails. Under all condition if the normal offset power is not available, offset power normal supplied may be through the through through the local grid. So, not available due to fire or other reasons local generator would provide electrical power to the pump. So, there is standby generator set. The power to the detector alarm actuator system is provided through batteries. So, detector system will work whether whether it is power is there or not, but it is through batteries which is constantly charged by offside power. Even if AC power is not available, the DC power provided through the battery is expected to be available at all times. The manual valves on the two sides of the pump 1 and pump 2 are normally opened, only remain closed when they are being repaired. The entire fire system and generator are located outside the reactor compartment, so therefore not affected by internal fire. Okay. So, now I go back to this again. So, see this is the primary primary system for fire extinguishing. This when this one this one actuates 
after getting signal from the detector. If this fails, the second one, this one will work. This one will be basically pump will be activated by operator. If both fails, local department will be called. And you see that the pump 1 and pump 2 takes water from water tank. There is always offside power available. In case offside power not available, diesel generator will, uh, will basically provide sub or supply power. And the battery to these systems are always uh, basically recharged and it is available even if the electric power is not available. So, my your work is basically, so you want to know that how good your system is to, to protect the fire or to extinguish the fire from greater damage. Okay. So, it is basically see the fire occur mean accident has already occurred. So, that means it is basically a, a we are talking about when an accident takes place how your system behaves. So, this is basically an inventory issue initially. So, what we will do? we will first prepare the inventory. Okay. So, let us hope that the fire how it occurs that fault tree is known and the very small probability that fire will occur in this system. Now, there are two things one is on site power protection system and off site fire protection system you have seen that on site and off site power protection system because nozzle 1 nozzle 2 on site and otherwise local fire department will come. If on site fire protection system is successful, then off site is not required. So, outcome or accident scenario will be that minor damage. If op on site one is failure, then off site fire protection system may be successful, may be failure. If it is successful, major damage will be there. If this also unsuccessful, catastrophic things will happen. So, this is my accident scenarios. Now, here in this example, I want to show you that, that how the success of this or failure of this also an issue because this is basically protection measure. There is success and failure. Now, you can use fault tree here, you can use fault tree here, then you can find out success and failures. So, one fault tree you are con constructing here for the system when, how fire will when fire will take place, what is the probability of fire occurring. Then if fire occurs, whether on site protection measure works, what is the probability that it will not work? What is the probability that it will work? Similarly, if on site fails, whether the local fire department will come and ex extinguish or not, probability of being a failure. So, that means this probability times this probability times this probability will give you the probability of catastrophic in nature. Okay, so, that is also that is ok. So, now in the you have the entire bow tie for fault this one may be another fault tree is there and this side also. Now, here for this for this you have another fault tree for this fault tree. So, the mean fault tree and event tree in combination you are in able to find out all possible routes of failure their preventive measures, mitigative measures all those things are very 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 possible. Okay. So, I will what I will do I will show you that uh, th that uh, these two uh, suppose the on site protection measures fail. So, that means this one fault tree that this two will fail. So, this this is this one the on site protection measure fails failure of primary one failure of sec second one primary injection path two primary injection path 1. So, path 1 means the nozzle 1 you see that these are the things this failure that nozzle failure, valve failure, another inlet valve, outlet valve, tank not available. So, all those things lead to failure of this and pump failure also lead to failure of this, but pump failure depend on many other things. And similarly here mm, your Mm, but this both the pump are identical. So, that means the pump failure what will happen you will find out that uh, that there will be common cause you tell me there will be common cause of failure because pump failure uh, there will be common cause of failure. So, that is why what happened it may be a situation when there are certain causes which cause pump 1 to fail as well as pump 2 to, to fail 
that situation will has to be taken care of here. So, here one additional thing you are learning that all the basic events it not that it is basically to, uh, going to um, do something uh, separate, uh, separate top events or intermediate events. There are certain things which ultimately may be applicable to uh, different intermediate or finally leading to top event. For example, and those things to be looked into matter, but you have to see that the, those common causes should not be should not be eliminated. Maybe in one side of the fault tree you use it, in other side you have not used it. That should not taken place. So now see, we have we have given a common cause failure, the dependent failure of a pump one and pump two, in this side also and in this side also. So, there are there are method how to find out the common cause failure and, and you have to do it, but for the for the sake of simplification simplicity we have not added here this common cause how this common cause uh, the dependent failures are quantified we have not given to you here. Okay. So, what I mean to say this is basically on side protection system in that fails this is given like this. So, that means you know, fault tree again you are using fault tree within the event tree. Now, you can find out the upside one the also that will fail. Hmm. So, in a similar manner you, you, you find out the fault tree for this event tree for this. So, that means what I mean to say what I have shown you here not only fault tree here, fault tree here fault tree for this, fault tree for this also because otherwise how do you know it is working the pivotal events are working or not. Suppose you say we have on site protection measure, then you must know when on site protection measure fails, how do you know it? You will know from this. Now, you have to develop the card set for this and then you will know what are the events that if occur will lead to top event to occur, those events should not occur simultaneously. Okay. So, many a times we, we, we give this example fall from ladder. So, you see that fall from ladder, why fall from ladder, this fall tree and that this I have explained earlier also, then fall from ladder what will happen depending on the conditions. Here actually not protection configuration, here basically under what condition this event can take place, whether from which height, what is the contact surface and all those things and then which body at very affected then accordingly the severity or the consequence has been different. It is primarily basically related to injury severity. Okay, so, that means in not necessarily that you will use only for the high uh, more technology oriented situation the bow tie it is not. This is an example that which basically uh, can be used also in the manual job or semi mechanized kind of job also this bow tie can be applied. So, this that is why this application I have kept. So, now these two when you combine together this is nothing but bow tie for fall from ladder. So, my, my ultimate uh, aim of uh, showing so many uh, bow tie just to tell you that bow tie can be developed for almost every system for to understand the accident scenarios. Understanding accident scenarios means knowing the path from hazards to accident and when you have safety critical system it is it is better to use bow tie, bow tie in the sense fault tree and event tree together. By saying fault tree and event tree together it is it, 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 it is another simplification of bow tie, it does not mean that bow tie always requires fault tree and event tree. The issue is that bow tie basically links the preventive side and the mitigative side, preventive measures and mitigation measures. So, you may not apply may not develop also fault tree and event tree, you may adopt some other techniques to identify the causes of the accident and to identify uh, fi, fi, that how the system behaves when accident takes place absolutely no harm. So, that sense bow tie is more versatile. So, here the cut sets we have developed and this part you know and then finally, uh, the quantification part this is again the repetition. So, but the repetition for the for the benefit of you not benefit of 
anybody else. So thank you very much. So in nutshell, I said that bow tie is an important tool for safety engineering, particularly if you are interested in prevention through design, because from the cause to consequence and for the safety critical system, it's a wonderful tool. So I recommend all of you, you understand fall tree and event tree, take safety critical system, develop the thing and all and generate all the all the accident paths, understand cut set from the boat uh, fall tree point of view, then understand cut set from the accident scenario point of view. I will be discussing the cut set for accident scenario in the next class. So be be careful, attentive in the next class. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much.